So if you look at that, we talked about the power of cost basis reduction. Um, I teach the, the options one class, <clears throat> teach the options one class with uh, legacy. Um, and uh, I, was, I was teaching about covered calls this week and just was reminded of, of how fascinating a concept it is. And um, I thought it would be worth reviewing, okay, because it's something that, that should be helping in this choppy environment, okay, where calls really add value, specifically covered calls, uh, is in neutral to bearish markets. Um, that's where it's really going to help you out perform. So. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> using this as our guide, I went through an example on AT&T. Uh, AT&T has dropped to a support zone. Everybody see the weekly chart here? So one of the themes that we've seen this, this last couple of months is um, consumer staple stocks and telecoms have gotten beaten up. And... Um, when you look at high dividend paying stocks, so high dividend paying, uh, let's call it sectors, you have utilities, they, they pay higher dividends. You have real estate investment trusts, those pay higher dividends. You have consumer staples and telecom. Those are kind of the four areas off the top of my head that tend to pay pretty good dividends. And so, um, Hopefully everybody here is is fairly familiar with this idea. I know I know it's not it's not very exciting to talk about dividends, but but hear me out just for a second. Uh, it will become increasingly exciting as you get more money. I promise. Um, basically, the way dividend dividends work is we measure what's called the dividend yield. Okay, and it's it's basically just the annual dividend divided divided by, come on, man, there you go, divided by the stock price, okay? And so the more the stock price falls, the higher the dividend yield, okay? So consider that the silver lining of uh, a dividend stock getting hit, okay? Now, the, the, the risk, the risk is if the stock uh, cuts the dividend. That kind of upends this whole, this whole spiel, okay? And so that recently happened in General Electric, for example. GE uh, kept going down, 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 and you could have said, oh, well, that sucks if you own GE. Uh, but the silver lining is the dividend yield goes up. The problem is they cut the dividend. And so that's, you know, what you don't want to have happen. So if, if the company's in dire straits and their fundamentals deteriorate and they cut the dividend, it kind of puts, puts the kibosh on, uh, on that whole um, deal, okay? So using AT&T as our example, let me go to the weekly chart. AT&T has been getting beaten up this year. It's, it's gone from basically 39 bucks down to 32 that's about 20%, right? That's about 20%. Um, and so uh, when you look at the weekly chart, you can see it's coming up on some pretty good support zones. Okay, we got some pretty good support in this 32, 31 area. Everybody agree with that? So, so coming up on some pretty good potential support levels. If you look at how far it's fallen from its peak, 43.89 minus 31.94. We got about a $12 drop. If we divide that by 43.89, it's about a 27% drop. So, you know, that's a pretty big haircut, right? 27% off the highs, that's, that's a straight up bear market. So AT&T has gotten whacked. Um, but one of the silver linings is the dividend yield is a lot more attractive because now to get the dividend, you only have to pay 32 bucks instead of paying 44 almost, right? So if you take a look at the trade tab and you hit this little button right here, this little arrow, uh, it says that this pays a 50 cent dividend every quarter. Okay, so if you're getting a 50 cent dividend 
every quarter. Now this is complex math here, complex math. How much would you get for the year? Oh, Adib, you're so smart. Four, uh, two dollars, two dollars, right? Fifty cents times four is two dollars. So if you're getting two dollars, well, let's say the dividend has stayed the same. Let's assume that the dividend has has stayed around fifty cents per per quarter. Okay, um, and I don't know when the last time is that they raised their dividend. Uh, fifty cents, fifty cents. Back here it was forty nine cents, forty nine cents. Let's go back a couple of years. This is the nice thing about having the data. Uh, is you can kind of go back and see. So when this was around, when this was back at its peak, it was paying a 48 cent dividend. Now it's paying a 50 cent dividend. Okay. Okay. So um, let's pretend it was still paying 50 cents back here. So if I'm getting $2 and I had to pay 43.89 to buy the stock to get the $2 dividend, that's a yield of 4.6%. Everybody see that? So back here, the dividend yield was a 4.6% return. Okay. Well, now I only have to pay $31.94 to get that $2 dividend. So $2 divided by the current price, $31.94, is a 6.3% dividend. So the yield has gone from 4.6% to 6.3%. You see that? Does that make it a more attractive stock if you believe in the long-term fundamentals and you think that they'll, they'll keep the dividend? Yeah, I mean, isn't that the same analysis that, that you do on your, your savings account? 